What's up guys, it's Drak, and today we're doing the one that you really care about. We are doing the Diva Pistol Review. Now, this is possibly the most affordable and definitely the most cosplayer friendly because this one, unlike the McCree Blaster and unlike the Reaper Shotguns, is actually color correct to the game. Now, I want to put, put an apology slash disclaimer out there. I thought about buying the $20 Zentai suit for uh, Diva's Zero Suit-esque thing. I mean, that they totally didn't steal from Metroid. And I thought about wearing that for you in this video. And then I thought better of it. And then I thought about all of my friends who already have the Zentai suit. And I thought about getting them to come in and do the video for you guys. Then I decided against either of those things. First off, I don't look good in the Zentai suit. And second off, the people who own the suit and cosplay Diva know literally nothing about Nerf Blasters. And it would have been like a bad review. And we've already got way too many people who know nothing about Nerf Blasters making Nerf Blaster review videos. <laughs> So it comes with three Overwatch rival rounds. They are a different color than the Reaper rounds. Go figure. I don't know how they're color coordinating this. They're green, which matches the accenting, I suppose. I mean, nothing on the Reaper shotgun was red, so I just don't understand. But uh, D.Va is the, the K-pop star with the mech, and when she's not in her mech, she does this number. So anyway, the more popular costume, instead of actually learning how to build armor or do some sort of like prop fabrication for the mech, is to just cosplay D.Va for $20 on Amazon by wearing the Zentai suit and making a 3D printed pistol. But 3D printed pistols are going to be a thing of the past because this is super duper affordable. Coming in at 20 United States dollars, this cosplay prop that happens to be a uh, rival pistol is actually better than the doubly priced McCree revolver, which is not a revolver. At least this thing uh, holds extra ammunition. It's got a very Kronos-esque setup inside where, again, it's got that tubular magazine so that uh, it will um, bodaciously hold extra ammunition, and then radically rack to, uh, to reload. If I keep up the tubular jokes, we're going to have to go on an excellent adventure. Excellent! So that's enough jokes and enough talking about it. Uh, that's D.Va's rough background. Let's take a look at the actual pistol. So, uh, like the Reaper mask and the McCree badge, this is going to come with a D.Va accessory. It looks like it's her little plastic bunny charm, which I think is actually on... The pistol, it really bugs me that these aren't stickers. Guys, it would have been so easy to make the cover label for this otherwise completely unnecessary thing. Stickers, like this would be a cool sticker. This would be a cool sticker. The sprays from the game as stickers would have been a nice freemium include for people. But we'll go ahead and pop it out of the plastic. Yikes. So the chain that holds the charm on is really, really cheap. It almost broke while I was pulling it out of the plastic. And it is a, uh, I think, what do they call these? Poly? A low poly bunny statue or what have you. And it's like a slightly rubberized plastic. And hilariously, since it's semi-translucent, you can see how they just anchored this piece in there by setting it into the mold and then pouring the rubberized plastic to cure in there. So this is actually very tacky. This might be the one thing that you want to upgrade if you are turning this into your cosplay prop. But overall, build is solid. Handle is... Why can't they make any of these handles comfortable? I think it's got to be because they're trying to be as game accurate as possible. And the game is built out of like polygons and layers or what have you. But this is, this is weird. So it's super wide for one thing. For the traditionally very tiny women who cosplay D.Va, it's going to be even wider. Uh, but um, you can get a decent wrap on it, and then it's not so bad. Best trigger out of all these blasters so far. And then as we pull this back, it's got pretty pretty standard rival uh, prime to it. And then these are going to slot in like this. And forward. Interestingly enough, this one does not have a jam cover, just like the other two. Again, I think that they're door deleting all of them. However, uh, you're going to want to be careful as you put your fingers in there because if you look after I fire, it opens up so that you have access to that aperture. But if you were to close here, there's nothing to stop you from pinching your finger really, really good. So let's go ahead woo, and do that. And we are getting standard rifle performance. I imagine this has Kronos internals in it. It'll be interesting to see if they're actually Kronos internals and they're actually compatible with like our spring setups and what have you. But overall, like, I mean, 
Aesthetically, this is exactly as promised. It is Diva's pistol. It's got the, the bling to match. Helicopter. Um, but uh, it's got the badges. It's got deco on both sides, which is nice. This is uh, subtly emblazoned on here, so you don't have to worry about um, losing some of your aesthetic cred for your costume to warning label and then the Overwatch decal. And then I actually don't see a Nerf Rival logo on here anywhere. That's kind of wild, but we've got the HB50 on here. And then, uh, cutely enough, I think that there's got to be some sort of regulation for Rival Jewels for some reason where they need to have a safety switch. Nobody's ever going to touch this. Like, technically, you could set it to safe, but if your convention wants it to be safe, you're just going to zip tie it. Now, it's a little bit more expensive than the Kronos, but if the cute factor is for you, like, this is actually a war practical blaster. It's a little bit harder to holster, but it's got the same sort of uh, aesthetic and cross compatibility and uh, general reliability that the Kronos does, in addition to the ability to... Uh, slam it home like that. I mean, this, the Kronos is my number one blaster of 2018. Like, it is a serious contender. I could have been a contender. And so this could have been a contender. Like, this is, is seriously cool. The bunny charm would get very annoying if you're an actual, like, nerfer and you wanted to use this in better. Um, you would probably want to pop this off, which is, uh, looks relatively easy. In fact, I think, oh man, is it really that cheap? It's so cheap you could probably twist it off if you wanted to. With the charm installed, I don't know if it'll pass our spinability test. Oh, it does. It just gets locked in there. Would have been terrible if we'd whacked ourselves in the face with the rubberized bunny. I kind of like grabbed it there like a kumbaloy. Um, anyway, uh, this, this is a nice blaster. It's a fine offering. I still think that the Reaper shotguns are the best offering because they're doing something unique in terms of their extra storage capacity on board, but that will quickly quickly be a thing of the past. I imagine that the Jupiter will be using similar internals with a, uh, a slightly different priming action. Um, but this, this is solid. It's an offering. It's an item like you could use this as your default rival pistol if you were so inclined. Realistically, I think that all of these are for Overwatch fans that happen to want to have functioning props, but uh, the Reaper shotgun has extra shells. And then this one, has a slightly smaller onboard capacity, but is roughly the size of the Kronos and looks super cool to match. So it's like the Rebel Kronos if you wanted to attach gender to a toy, which is a little bit silly. That concludes this video. It's Wednesday, my dudes. <coughs> which means that I hope you had a super amazing Christmas yesterday. Like, I hope that you got everything that you wanted. Comment down below, tell me what Nerf things you got for Christmas, because I'm just super curious to find out if Santa brought you anything super special that flings foam. But uh, that concludes my Rival Blaster reviews for the Overwatch stuff for this year, unless you really, really wanna see me review a micro shot. If you wanna see me review a micro shot, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure that you catch all of my content, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button because YouTube has no interest in showing creators videos anymore. Just like absolutely none. The subscribe button means barely anything anymore. But uh, I hope that you guys had a wonderful holiday. I hope that you guys got sweet, sweet Nerf blasters from Santa. And I hope that you're revving up for an amazing New Year's party. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. That's the Diva Blaster. The price is right. The aesthetics are on point. Can't complain about anything else. Much love. Nerf on, check out.